In this video, I'll be showing you how to assemble and configure a Raspberry Pi Zero W to be used as a Wi-Fi security camera, which is accessible over the internet. We'll be using an operating system called Motion iOS, which is a web-based, mobile and tablet-friendly surveillance system, which can be used with a Raspberry Pi camera or USB cameras. You can also set up motion detection with email notifications, textile images and time-lapse movies. You can also configure it to upload media files to network storage locations or to cloud storage services. To build your camera, you'll need a Raspberry Pi Zero W, the Pi camera, the ribbon cable connector, which is different to the cable supplied with the camera for the standard Raspberry Pi model, an 8 gig or larger SD card, and then a case or something to put the Pi into to protect it. We'll start by assembling the components into the Pi Zero case. First, let's attach the heatsink which came with the board. Now let's attach the camera. The ribbon cable just slides into the connector with the contacts facing towards the board. Make sure that the black clip is pulled away from the connector to open it. Then push the black clip back into place to grip the ribbon cable. Now do the same on the connector on the Raspberry Pi. Next open up the case and push the Pi into the back of the case. There are small pegs on the case which align with the screw holes on the Pi and the ports should all be aligned with the cutouts on the side of the case. Next, clip the camera into place on the top cover and then close up the case and check that it all fits correctly. We can now move on to preparing the SD card with the operating system. Use a card reader to plug the SD card into your computer. Now you'll need to download the Motion iOS software. I'll put a link to it in the video description. If you're not using Raspberry Pi Zero or you'd like to use a different board, have a look at the list of supported devices to see which version of the operating system you should download. There's also a guide for the installation provided in the wiki. Go to the list of latest releases and make sure that you download the latest version of software which is compatible with your board. We'll be using the Raspberry Pi version, which was released on the 6th of June. Once you've downloaded the software, you'll need to unzip it. I used 7-zip. You'll then need to use an image flasher to flash the disk image to your SD card. I've put a link to the one recommended in the installation instructions in the video description. You'll need to select the source file, which is the disk image which you've unzipped in the previous step. Then select your destination target, which is your SD card. Then click on Flash and wait for the software to write the disk image to your SD card. Finally, you'll need to tell your Raspberry Pi how to connect to your Wi-Fi network. To do this, use the template linked in the video description. It's a basic text file in which you need to add your country code and then your network name or ID and the network password. You can find a list of country codes on Wikipedia. Rename the file as shown, making sure to change the extension as well. Then put it into the 30 MB settings partition, which you're able to write to on your SD card. Once you've done this, your SD card is ready to be installed into your PAR for the first boot up. You don't need to attach a monitor for this next step, but it's helpful to check that you don't get any error messages and to make sure that the Pi is finished setting up properly. The first boot up takes about a minute or two to complete. If you haven't used the monitor, then you'll need to find the IP address of the Pi using a network analyzing tool on your computer. 
Once you've found the address, type it into your browser to access the Pi in its video feed. If everything is working correctly, the video feed from your camera should now show up after a few seconds. If you open up the settings menu, you can also shut down or restart your Pi, which I'm going to do now so that I can install it. If you ask for login details, the default username is admin with no password. I 3D printed a small GoPro adapter to stick on the back of the Pi case so that it can be mounted onto any standard GoPro mounts. I'm going to be using a suction cup mount to mount the power onto the outside window under a cover. This mount also enables the camera to be positioned so that it's pointing in the right direction. You'll need to power it using a USB power supply. You can also use a power bank to temporarily power it for a mobile surveillance system. Let's have a look at the video feed outside. You can also access the camera using your mobile phone or tablet. The last step is to configure port forwarding on your router so that you can access the camera over the internet. You'll need to start by assigning a fixed IP address to your camera, so that it doesn't change every time it reconnects to the network. This can be done in the Motion iOS settings menu. Set the IP configuration to manual, and then change the IP address to the address you want to always assign to the camera. This should be out of the range that your router typically assigns addresses, otherwise you'll end up with a conflict if that address has already been used. You might also need to change your default gateway to your router's address. Next you'll need to set up port forwarding on your router. This is something I can't really show you how to do because it's very different for each router make and model. You essentially need to log into your router's configuration page and then add a port forwarding instruction so that requests from outside your local network on a specific port are forwarded to the particular device, in this case your Raspberry Pi camera. Keep in mind that the IP address you need to type in over the internet is the IP address which your provider has assigned to your router. So this might change if you don't have a fixed IP address arrangement with them. Once this is done, you should be able to access your camera over the internet in the same way that you would do locally. If you're still unsure how to do this, try searching for setting up port forwarding on your specific router make and model. Let me know if you've built your own Raspberry Pi security camera in the comment section and let me know what you're using it for. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.